At the end of the Cold War, the sizable communist empire of the Soviet Union shattered into several independent states. While most faced economic challenges, they inherited well-armed militaries. One of the weapons they were left with was the T-64. Born at the height of the Cold War, the T-64 was a marvel of its era with trailblazing attributes, a robust engine, an automatic loading system, superior composite armor, and a shield against nuclear, biological, and chemical threats. However, despite its groundbreaking innovations, the T-64's potential was initially overshadowed by its hidden shortcomings. Now, in a twist of destiny, Ukraine has rekindled the might of the T-64, turning it against its erstwhile allies. As the echoes of a bygone era reverberate, this Cold War beast has risen, proving that its battle spirit remains undiminished. As we explored the fascinating engineering of the T-64 tank, we were thrilled to learn you can actually wield its power into battle right now in War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Here at Dark Docks, we learn about the greatest vehicles in modern warfare every day, yet being able to take them for a spin and see them in incredible detail, modeled down to their individual components in mesmerizing graphics and 4K resolution, is an entirely mind-blowing experience. But it's not just the Soviet T-64. War Thunder boasts a staggering roster of over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and warships. Dive into dynamic combined arms PvP battles, a gripping simulation so real you'll forget you're safely at home. Experience one of gaming's most realistic vehicle damage models. Your vehicle doesn't just lose hit points when it's hit. Every shell impact, every bullet counts. Through the revolutionary damage x-ray system, you can witness how every blow affects your vehicle's components and your crew. Click our link in the description to dive into War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. And for our PC gamers, using our link gets you a huge bonus pack with exclusive premium vehicles, premium account, boosters, and so much more. In the late 1950s, the Soviet Union produced the most innovative yet problematic tank of the late 20th century, the T-64. Renowned tank designer Alexander Morozov, whose claim to fame was the creation of the T-34 and T-54, led the development of the T-64. Manufactured in Kharkiv, modern-day Ukraine, the new design sought to gain qualitative superiority on the battlefield by taking on the standard four-man main battle tanks of its western opposition. To achieve this, the T-64, built for battlefield supremacy, boasted a series of pioneering features. Central to the tank's design was its 5TDF engine, a compact powerhouse that delivered 700 horsepower. This mechanical marvel, half the size and weight of traditional engines, endowed the T-64 with exceptional agility, allowing it to reach 45 miles per hour. The T-64 became the world's pioneer of multi-layer laminate and composite armor. This intricate defense mechanism dissipated the destructive energy of enemy fire, making the Soviet beast nearly indestructible. Despite the heavy armament and armor akin to a heavyweight, the T-64 tipped the scales at a mere 42 short tons. Another groundbreaking addition was the autoloader system that complemented the tank's main 125mm smoothbore gun. At the time, the largest main gun mounted on any tank in the world. This innovative feature stored and loaded shells rapidly, shortening the interval between shots and reducing the standard crew number from four to three. Designed with an eye on the nuclear realities of its time, the T-64 featured an overpressure system that sealed its interior from chemical, biological, or nuclear threats. It carried a built-in fire suppression system to combat the risk of internal fires reinforcing the T-64 as a veritable fortress on tracks. In this way, the T-64 emerged from Kharkiv, not just as another Soviet tank, but as a revolutionary testament to Soviet military technology. Upon its inauguration into operational service with the Soviet Army in 1964, the T-64 was entrusted to the elite ranks of the Soviet tank regiments. Its deployment was especially prominent within the group of Soviet forces in Germany, a critical component of the Warsaw Pact's bulwark against NATO in East Germany. As was common with Soviet models, the T-64 was cloaked in secrecy. Its cutting-edge technical specifications were tightly guarded, obscuring not only its capabilities, but also its many shortcomings. Of these, the most glaring was the unreliable engine and its flawed autoloader, infamous for its propensity to mangle the arms of unlucky gunners. 
Such technical failures were problematic and certainly inconvenient, yet they remained a clandestine affair for decades. From 1964 to 1987, a relatively modest count of 13,000 T-64s rolled off the production lines. Along with the tank's substantial cost, more than the less intricate T-72, this reflected the difficulties and financial implications tied to its production. By the end of the 1960s, it became evident that the T-64, despite its innovative design, wouldn't become the Soviet Army's go-to tank. While innovative, it was riddled with significant drawbacks that held it back from exportation outside the Soviet Union. Nevertheless, the T-64 left an indelible mark on Soviet tank development history. It began a notable lineage of T-series tanks, with each subsequent model, including the T-72 and its modifications, the T-80, the T-80U, the T-80UD, and Ukraine's T-84, inheriting design concepts from the T-64. Despite its initial challenges, the T-64 did not go completely obsolete. Throughout the tempestuous 1980s, as the Soviet Union moved towards its dissolution, the T-64 underwent several intensive modernization programs. These endeavors led to the T-64A and T-64BV variants, with superior firepower and protection through anti-tank guided missile systems and enhanced armor. In the aftermath of the Soviet Union's collapse in 1991, only three tank production plants remained in operation. Two of these, the principal manufacturers of the T-80, T-72, and T-90, were situated within the Russian Federation in the historic city of St. Petersburg. The remaining factory, dedicated to the production of the T-64, was nestled in Kharkiv, within the confines of the newly independent state of Ukraine. At the time of this monumental geopolitical shift, the Ukrainian army had approximately 2,000 T-64s, 1,000 T-72s, and 300 T-80s at their disposal, creating a robust foundation for their armored forces. As the turn of the century neared, the steadily aging T-64s underwent a thorough rejuvenation process carried out by the Ukrainian army, albeit constrained by limited financial resources. In 1999, the first revitalized T-64BM Bulats emerged from the Kharkiv factory, marking a new chapter for this veteran war machine. The Bulats were endowed with a sophisticated fire control system and gun stabilization for enhanced accuracy, capable of deploying anti-tank guided missiles and featured advanced explosive reactive armor, an engine with increased power, and cutting-edge electronics. In 2005, the T-64 BM Bulats officially entered Ukrainian service, standing as a locally produced symbol of military acumen. Ukrainian-held T-64s saw their trial by fire in 2014, when the shadow of conflict darkened eastern Ukraine, spurred by Russia's support for local insurgents. At the dawn of the conflict, Ukraine's armored cavalry comprised 720 battle-ready T-64BVs and T-64BMs, bolstered by a reserve of another 600. However, despite their significant upgrades, these tanks quickly fell prey to the lethal efficiency of insurgents armed with anti-tank infantry weapons. This vulnerability echoed the susceptibility of their Russian counterparts to similar weapons, highlighting a fundamental weakness in their design. The invasion of Crimea by Russia proved a costly engagement for Ukraine. After enduring losses, the remaining T-64BM tanks were meticulously repaired and relegated to storage. This surprising move saw Ukraine favoring the older T-64BV model for frontline duty. The turmoil catalyzed a vigorous modernization effort directed at the fleet. In this endeavor, a considerable number of T-64BVs were upgraded with modern optics, passive infrared sights, and snugly fitted reactive armor blocks. This model wasn't a fresh introduction in 2014. Rather, it represented a modernized variant of the existing T-64BVs. The revised T-64BV variant, tested by conflict, was about to face its ultimate challenge, standing its ground against even the latest Russian tanks. By 2022, Modernized versions of the T-64 had evolved into the mainstay of Ukraine's tank arsenal. When Russia commenced its invasion in February of that year, Ukraine, despite being outnumbered, rallied all available tanks to confront and ultimately repel the enemy. These reimagined T-64 BVs have displayed remarkable tenacity, 
even when pitted against more modern Russian tanks, particularly in clashes like the one near Kharnihiv in the spring of 2022. In the intense combat that unfolded during the initial weeks of the widespread war, Ukraine's 1st Tank Brigade strategically positioned its fleet of approximately 100 T-64 BBs within the forested buffer zone between Kharnihiv and the neighboring Kyiv. As Russian tanks swept by, the T-64 BB crews initiated their assault at point-blank range, leveraging their faster autoloaders to gain the upper hand over Russian crews, and the 1st Tank Brigade emerged victorious in the Battle of Kharnihiv. However, the sheer ferocity of the conflicts has inflicted heavy tank losses on both Ukraine and Russia. By mid-April, Ukraine had lost 110 T-64 BBs, and on April 25th, Russia claimed its first T-64 BM victory. In the same time frame, the Russians had suffered 16 losses of their own T-64 BBs. Ukraine's counter-attacking forces had repelled the Russians from Kharkiv by mid-May 2022. T-64s built there likely led the charge. In August 2022, Ukrainian sources alleged that a T-64 BB took down an undisclosed Russian vehicle at a staggering distance of 6.5 miles. If confirmed, this kill doubles the previous record of 3.1 miles held by a Challenger 1 tank. According to Ukrainian sources, this was accomplished by launching 20 125mm high-explosive shells with a drone directing the barrage. This strategy rendered the Russian vehicle unable to retaliate, tipping the balance of the encounter in Ukraine's favor. As of 2023, T-64 crews have increasingly been tasked with fulfilling artillery roles, leading to a scarcity of 125mm ammunition. When Russian infantry forces are dispatched directly to the battlefield, the T-64 crews are called upon to support the troops. After discharging their firepower at a target, they relocate and repeat their assault, with attack helicopters and drones providing critical support. However, eventually, Ukraine will exhaust its supply of T-64s. Although the Kharkiv tank plant could manufacture a limited number of new models using long-stored components, it's unlikely that production could keep pace with losses in the long term. Facing this challenging reality, Ukraine is strategically investing in the T-84 Oplot tanks, a wholly Ukrainian design first manufactured in 1994, which is now experiencing a resurgence amidst the throes of war. As the T-64, a relic of a bygone era, continues its valiant fight, Ukraine looks ahead, ready to pen a new chapter in its military history. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. To feel what it's like to climb inside the T-64 or any other modern combat vehicle, join us in War Thunder. Take your favorite war machine into combat while you support this channel. Click the link below and take advantage of the exclusive reward for all PC players.